coming to you from our opulent and luxurious 4x8 refurbished broom closet at the National Headquarters in Indianapolis. With duct tape, studio lights, and a mic that you barely can hear, we hope to entertain and educate you. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. Hello, hello, hello. And guess what? I'm not Mark Seagate. It's Ashley. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in this week. So as you've noticed, the Alpha, or excuse me, the Tango Alpha Lima podcast is switching it up. And by yours truly, and I hope that we can edit a cool sound into this. Or I can make a sound, right? (laughs) So I am taking lead as we cover some super special near and dear stories to highlight Women's History Month. So we all know some amazing women in our lives who have worn the uniform and we're going to cover some contemporary and some fun facts today. So I'm going to be your tour guide for these facts, stories, and a little bit of Legion lore on today's show. So buckle up. So buckle up, right? So I'd like to introduce my amazing co-host, right? We've got Mark. Steve, Mark, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am great. I noticed I, you've changed do, your I, decor a bit. I do very much like having the day off from having to draft these oh. at 3 o'clock in the morning. Much appreciated. And yeah, I have, uh, I've entirely shifted my table 180 degrees. So you get mm-hmm. this today with my Tom Brady candle and my bottle of Bailey's and my other nerd wow. stuff. All, all of the nerd stuff for our, our listeners out there. He has all of the Game of Thrones banners behind the, behind him. Uh, just out of curiosity, which banner do you identify with? Uh, I think I like the Targaryen one the best. Yeah? Okay. All right. Okay, I guess we could be friends. Okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I'll allow it. And good sir, Mr. Jeff Daly, how are you doing today out in there, Hollywood I am California. outstanding. I'm keeping it consistent with the Whoopi, and uh, <laughs> I could turn it around again, and you'll still see the Whoopi, because I don't need any weirdos out there knowing about my home and what you can steal. Okay, so I'm just going to keep it. Oh, uh, I'm. Keep I'm, it. Sh- I'm sure there's people clamoring all over Hollywood to break oh, in yeah. and steal your Robert's Rules of Order right off your table. No, no, now, that's you... Confederacy oh, of Dunces that's right. right now. Oh. That's for you, oh, okay. and <laughs> they might want to steal my. Free oh, put together IKEA furniture. I mean, because wow. that that adds value if it's already put together. That's yeah. impressive. Takes Nothing. a lot of time, a lot of instructions, or their lack of. Wow. Yep. Good for, good for you, Jeff. Good for you. I'm a handy man. You said turn around, and I just said every time. Turn oh, around. And da, 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 da. Oh. That's the first thing that popped in my head. I don't know where I'm at today. My blood sugar is up, 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 and I'm super excited to be hosting. I'm the hostess with the Moses today, this week, right? Anyway. <laughs> wow. I'm still trying anyway. to get over that singing. <clears throat> I'm going to clear my voice. You know, I'm not... I poor like super, karaoke. Poor super editor Ben has down. to hear that. Like... You know what? Ben likes me. Ben, <laughs> I like you too. Anyway, so... We're going to roll right into this, okay? So, Mark, I have a challenge for you. I have a challenge. Okay, brother, I got a challenge. So, our first articles are actually some articles that I wrote for the American Legion about women's history. Uh, One's entitled, you know, We Can Do It, The History of Women in the Military Service, and more recently, Women's Military History Matters. And we're going to do a bit of a mashup today, and uh, I kind of want to school you and some facts about, you know, women's history. So this is your quiz. Yeah, I don't. This I don't, is your quiz. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to quiz me. I, I think I probably oh. have this topic down fairly, fairly well. Uh, okay, fine. Whatever, whatever. All right. So I want to get started here. Okay. So for all of our listeners out there, we are celebrating Women's History Month, and specifically the military history portion of women who have been breaking ceilings for. God knows how long. How long? Since the Revolutionary War to present day. So women have been proudly serving in the U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and now our Space Force more recently, right? So nurses, pilots, engineers, soldiers, and other specialties. And that's over 3 million women who have served our country in an all-volunteer capacity. Bet y'all didn't know that. And during World War I, just kind of kick it, 
Over 35,000 women officially served as nurses and support staff. Then we jump over to World War II, where 141, or excuse me, 140,000 women served in U.S. Army. Um, you know, the Women's Army Corps, which is the WAC, performing critical jobs such as military intelligence to engineers, soldier, or, you know, just general soldiering and other specialities. So between that, parachute rigging, all that other stuff, I mean, these are incredibly impressive women. I will say that the parachute rigging was the one I didn't know about. Uh, cryptography, we knew about that one because we talked about it, uh, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, when mm-hmm. we talked about the the lady who was, I think, 102, who's a cryptographer. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking about there's some of the, a lot of people have probably heard about Molly Pitcher, but a lot of them probably don't know exactly what she did mm-hmm. um, way back then. So you talk about that. And then... In the Civil War, there was actually quite a few women who served while disguised as men. And I know I had read, there was one, Francis Clayton, who served in a artillery and cavalry regiments disguised as a male, which I always thought was fascinating. And then, of course, there's in World War One we had all the, uh, the Hello Girls. What's going on with Jeffrey? Did he... Oh, no, I was letting you guys go. I needed a pen. I'm going to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, take some notes. All right. I, I, I mean, I always <laughs> found it fascinating. Like, I know the units that I served in, you got to know everybody pretty well. How did a woman disguise herself as a man in the Civil War? That seems crazy. Impressive. Impressive. Yeah. I mean, that's... Like, the extra steps that would have had to have been taken That's a, that's a level of subterfuge... Sure... Yeah, there were some women who would, you know, travel hundreds of thousands of miles who would have all of these different roles. And then, you know, they wouldn't be discovered until later on where some of them actually had received some benefits, which was which is wild, because then they then had to go to, you know, the forefront and say, like, oh, like that was where some of our first women benefits were kind of won over is um, post-Civil War. I mean, it wasn't for everyone. It wasn't popularly acknowledged, but it happened, right? Yeah, well, there so, was there was the first uh, Mary Edwards Walker that was the first Medal mm-hmm. of Honor recipient, and she actually had her subsequently yeah. rescinded until yeah. it got unrescinded later on. But yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't. It's an <laughs> interesting time. We've we, we've 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 definitely we've come a long way. That's for sure. So let's let's move on. Okay, so we're after World War Two. And so President Truman signs the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, and that was June 12th, 1948. And for fun facts out there, uh, for some of our legions, uh, our state legions departments, some of your states actually have um, official Women Veterans Day where they recognize it on state levels, which is pretty cool. Uh, But that uh, June 12th is commonly referred to as Women Veterans Day, but it's not, again, a national thing. But that's where it comes from, and it's... This, if you will, this legislation, this this policy, right? It was to say that for the first time, women are going to be recognized as full members of the armed forces. Didn't necessarily mean they were going to get the same benefits, right? Like that would eventually progress further down along the road, where you had um, like public law ninety, uh, I think it was ninety one thirty or something along those lines, where uh, President Johnson. Then later on, this is what nineteen sixty sixty seven or so. Open promotions for women to general and flag ranks, uh, lifted ceilings for other ranks to be removed. And that was really like a 2% ceiling of a uh, number of women al- allowed to then be on active duty, right? And then in between that time frame, you've got women who are serving the Vietnam War um, and also serving the Southeast Asia, which is pretty yeah. interesting. Well, and then in Vietnam, there was about 7,000, I think it was. And then by the time we got to the Persian Gulf War, which, you know, is about roughly 20 years but in that 20 years we went from 7,000 serving in Vietnam to 41,000 deploying during the Persian Gulf War and then mm-hmm. we've got you know another it was a 40 in 1990 there was 40,000 American military women deployed for Desert Shield Desert Storm and then mm-hmm. now obviously all MOSs are open uh, with some exceptions but there's what uh, 11 111,000 positions open to women since 2013 uh and about 10 percent uh nearly 22 220,000 had remained closed today we've got 
what is it, 700,000 something of that? Yeah, 700,000. Yep. Yeah. So it's obviously we're, we're making progress. Oh, yeah. I mean, for those 700,000 women who have served, you know, during, you know, post 9-11 war, so that's Operation During Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, right? These are women who, uh, again, at certain points, even before 2016, were in combat positions returning fire, right? So the whole notion of women maybe not necessarily being in combat, that was just like... There were plenty of women who were like, no, like I returned fire, like, no, I was in my Humvee or I was driving, you know, a convoy and we received fire, you know, took fire. I had to, you know, provide, you know, medical treatment, whatever it was, right? So it's just so interesting that women, you know, leapt in and raised their right hand and for folks that aren't aware, you know, um, September 11th, the attacks of September 11th, it's going to be 20 years this year. You know, if you think about it, that's that's a whole generation who has grown up in this this era. So it's really really fascinating. So I appreciate you you Mark. Oh, look at you doing your homework, yeah, man! I'm actually, so excited. I, mean, I, I, I watch oh, a lot of TV, oh, oh, oh. so I watch a lot of documentaries, so I know all about Lee Ann Hester, who was the first silver star. But Jeff's got a bunch of notes over there. Yeah, oh, he's yeah, taking yeah. notes because we're really you proud two right now. Because you two nerds, while well, you two nerds were talking. Um, I was doing some learning. Oh, he must be okay. taking another call because he must be no, so I'm bored. A, no, I'm <laughs> quizzing. Kidding. I'm going to quiz you two. I don't know two. what he's doing. Is he still I'm going to quiz you two. Nope, I'm quizzing you. buddy. You're I'm on mute. mute? What the what? <laughs> this is fantastic. He must Ashley's really... always trying to mute me. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to quiz you two. <laughs> Are you ready? I did no my thing. first one, my first one, you already answered, but I'm going to, I'm going to add a bonus to it. So Ooh. you, uh, who was the first woman medal of honor recipient? That uh, was, um, Mary nope, Walker. Actually, Walker. Uh, Mary, nope. Mary you Walker. said it. It was Dr. Mary Walker a bonus for the year. Whoa. Ooh, Even the ooh. decade. It would have been 18. Oh, shit. Oh. Get your fingers oh. off the keyboard. I would have said 1863. You would have been close. It's 1865. All right. Ooh, okay. Who's the first right. American? Actually, Egypt? you know what? I, I'm going to take it Whoa. back because the first Medal of Honor wasn't even issued until the Great Train Robbery, which I think was 1864. So I should have actually known. I should have known, Jeff. So it took. It only took one year for the first woman to get it, and we're waiting for the second. So yes, some, waiting for uh, the, the second. Although I don't wish the circumstances on anyone people. to be able to be a recipient, but nonetheless. Okay, Their next, my next quiz, you guys thought I was just sitting there silent, like just being passive. Oh. Uh, this one you both should this. know, this super easy. The yeah. first American Legion commander in year, or w- woman commander in year. Ooh, Ooh. Um, I think oh. it was... I know Mark um, knows it. I know Mark knows no. it, so... Mark doesn't have a clue. The first really? American I... Legion woman commander? Wasn't it in oh, the 30s? Oh, 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 you're okay, okay. I stand corrected. You're talking about national commander. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh okay. national I, commander. I, I oh, Denise Rowan. Oh, you're I was oh, trying to think post? like, I don't know, Wyoming 1927, but that was the <laughs> first like, female. See, I didn't have the same page. I didn't have time to de- I didn't have time to drill down that far. That so did you be... guys say did you guys at least say her name, please, in it's... the year? Denise yeah, Rohan, Denise and Rowan. I think it was it was 2016 or 2017. 17. 17. All right. Uh, yeah. So not everybody not everybody knows these things. So please share and don't disparage. All right. No dispa- nobody. I want to be know the first. Denise. Hold please. Yes. I would like to know the first four star uh, woman of any branch ever. The first oh. woman to get four stars. Oh. On her- um, I think it was. It was uh, Army. It was, I think it was Anne. Is it Anne Dunley? Oh, I might be messing her name up. Oh. Was she first four star general? Oh, this is so fun. This I, I think, is fun. Answer, I love this. I, I'm not going to Google it, but I, I think I think you're in the right ballpark. <laughs> no, right? Ashley, get off the computer. She's cheating. Oh, I want to know. Now I want to know. Well, tell I'm going to tell you. It's Ann yes. Dunwoody. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. We so actually there you go. had her speak at something, I think, or. I've seen her speak at some event. I I, I should have known that one, but yeah. And Holly was saying there were post commanders in some year. I didn't. 1919, uh, maybe? Right at 1919? Yeah. Did we have one right out the gate? Was wow. it was it right yeah. out the gate for like first, like all female posts? Like I know that that was a thing too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, how about how cool? Look at we are learning so All much right. today. Let's keep let's keep this train rolling. Rolling. All right, we're gonna take a quick ad break, and we'll be right back. The restaurant industry is a great place to pursue your passion while building a career at the same time. If you like to cook, enjoy being part of a team, and show off your skills, sign up today for Restaurant Recruit. Restaurant Recruit will directly connect you to restaurant companies looking to hire great military talent and willing to invest in your career. Sign up if you're a veteran, a military spouse, or are getting ready to transition out of the service and are ready for your next big move. It's free and easy. Just go to chooserestaurants.org slash restaurantsrecruit to get started on a future in restaurants. Alrighty, and we are back after that marvelous, marvelous ad. And we're going to toss it over to CV on this cool task and purpose article, and I will let him take it from here. Yeah, so there's a task and purpose article. It's titled, Meet the Master Helmsman, the Navy Ship Drivers that are Barely Out of High School. And I, I will say, this always amazed me in the Army, too, that it's like the 18, 19-year-olds who are in charge of driving the tanks. And I always thought that was the most wild thing. Like, you would think you would build up to it, but apparently not. But uh, this is about uh, U.S. Navy Yeoman Third Class Adriana Soto from Painesville, Ohio. See, that's why this story is in there. It had to be. But anyway, she is now. Uh, let's see here. From oh, there's two others. So I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. Yeah, there's three of four. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so actually, there's four, it, but three are pictured in the article. Oh, okay. Adriana Soto cool. from Painesville, Ohio. Then we had she highlight Miss. <laughs> she highlighted Ohio, which is throwing me in I did. Up. I did highlight Ohio in the notes because I <laughs> wanted Jeff to see it. And then there's Alexandra you, Miller brother. from Annapolis, Maryland. And then sonar <laughs> technician Allison Coughlin from Reconcoma, New York. And they are three of the four qualified master helmsmen aboard the USS Teddy Roosevelt. Um, the first time Coughlin manned the helm of the $4.5 billion aircraft carrier, it was 2017. Wow. She was 18 years old, and it was time for her to take the wheel of the 117,000-ton aircraft carrier while it was conducting replenishment at sea. Um, and this is, I actually had to look this up. I don't know anything about Master Helmsman, but apparently this takes a ridiculous amount of classroom and training. Uh which I'm glad. I mean, I guess if you're driving a 117,000 ton aircraft, you should have a lot. But Coughlin said, um, they don't look at rank or whether you're a woman or a man, they don't look at age. I mean, I got qualified at 18 and a couple other master helmsmen are currently 18 and 19. When they see you are capable, no matter who you are and they trust you, that's an awesome feeling. Mm, that's powerful. How, how do they see that you're capable is what I'm wondering. Like, what do you... Parallel That's, parking. Well, uh, they have all mer- these. They have merging all those, onto the freeway. They have all those like <laughs> aircraft simulations. Do they have an aircraft carrier simulation somewhere where you can just? I'm be sure. Like, That's wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's it's just so cool because like you know my only point of reference is stories from my father in law who did you know 25 plus years in the navy who used to tell me. He hated being on a boat, but that was the branch he decided to choose. I don't understand it. And then my only other, like, you know, distinct experience is I've, I've been on a cruise ship. So that's those are the, my two comparison tools, right? Uh, aside from some of the stories I've heard from men and women who have been in the Navy. But, like, I can't even imagine trying to be like, I'm just going to back this in here real quick. I'm just going to make this yeah, quick yeah. turn. Like, that's wild to me. Bravo, ladies. Bravo. I, I drive my Jeep with my hands at 10 and 2 and about 10 miles under the speed limit. I could just imagine if I was driving a 117,000 ton thing. And I, I'm lucky if I don't get seasick on my kayak. So I, you know, hats off to them. Keep driving. Right. Keep me out of it. Yeah. I will remind you both of a couple of things. One. That's why you're here. Marines mm. are on ships. You don't have to be in the Navy. And uh, as I was on a ship and do not get seasick. Well, I do come from the land that is bordered by 20% of the Earth's fresh water and is above that other state called uh, Ohio. Yes. 
So, are we go? Are, are we are we moving? Are we? Yeah. Are we shuffling <laughs> off the buffalo? I, I will say I, one I guess is I you had to get your Michigan joke in there, but okay, okay. Last year, after much <laughs> conjoling, I had actually agreed to do a an embed with the Coast Guard. And then my plane crashed on the way to the island. Now, I wasn't on the plane, mind you, because I missed my connecting flight. But the plane I was supposed to be on crashed in Dutch Harbor, Alaska. And Dutch Harbor, Alaska, if you don't know, is so small that the plane crash shut down the only road in town and the only flight. So you could not get to Dutch Harbor. So my Coast Guard cutter left without me. And that was probably the last opportunity I'll ever have to be on a boat. So I missed out. Wow, uh-huh. that's, uh, it's that's very sad. We're gonna have to explore this story at another time. Wow, okay. super producer Holly remembers because I was calling in a panic from Anchorage, Alaska, like, "Hey, my plane crashed, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do." And so I ended and up. And I'm gonna, some... I'm gonna guess you're in a wild. in very rare company of people who have said that exact statement. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's my first thought. Like, well, from Anchorage, I'm calling from Anchorage, Alaska, and my plane has my crashed. Plane crashed. And well, I'm not worst, going to be able to get on the Coast Guard cutter. Well, I worst, bet no one's ever said no, that. No, the worst part was I got up at like four in the morning to go to the airport because I'm always early. And there was a note taped to the wall. And it was like, if you were on flight such and such, please contact this 1-800 number. And I was like, what Just is going on? And then it turned out, yeah, the plane had crashed. And a post-it note. That was it. That was, that was the notice I got. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Wow. I bet in honor of today, I bet there was a man that put up the post-it note because we're I don't know because there weren't any if you've ever been to an airport in Alaska it's sort of a part-time affair they don't have people sitting there around the clock so it <laughs> took me a couple days to figure out what was going on and to finally get home and I've I missed... never been to the welcome to Alaska sign in Alaska so there Ala- Alaska wow. is legit awesome but uh, all right it's probably well 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 top That's... Well. Top three favorite states in the world. I know. Right after Learn Michigan. something new every week, ladies yep. and gentlemen. There every you go. Week. All right. Topic three. Uh, the U.S. Department of Defense it's, is coming up with the first women, first military women of color exhibit, and it's already open at the Women's uh, War Memorial. So if you're in D.C., go check it out. Well, uh, the story is, while all women in the United States Armed Forces share a history of discrimination based on gender, women of color have faced barriers of gender, race, and traditional cultural values in the pursuit of opportunity for service in the armed forces. Now, there's persistent efforts in demanding inclusion for the right to serve. Women of color have seen the roles across society and all sectors tremendously expanded, including their presence in today's military. The Color of Freedom, honoring the diversity of American service women exhibit, has made its debut at the Military Women's Memorial on the grounds of Arlington National Cemetery, and it's virtual right now, and it has been since March 4th, 2021. Now, I've I've not been to D.C. since March 4th of 2021, since it's this month, so I, I wonder, Ashley, have you been there? I have not. I have been meaning to to take a trip. I was able to, and through the link that'll be in the show notes, they've got a really cool breakdown of the exhibit if you're unable to obviously get to, to Washington, D.C., Virginia, Arlington area to see this exhibit. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you're following these folks on social media, they've been posting different photos. They've got it on their website. Um, it's really meaningful, and I think it's incredibly important with a lot of the overarching conversations that we're having right now in America. And it's no more, of course, important than it is right now with Military Women's History Month. So I think, yeah, it, it made its debut virtually through like a ribbon cutting ceremony on the March 4th. And it's going to continue to be out and about. And it, I, I think it's cool. I think it's great. And I know um, U.S. Department of Defense covered this story and there are others that are covering as well, and I think it's really important. So, very cool. Mark, what do you think? You gonna go virtual? Go check it out virtually. I, I know I, you don't like. I know you don't like to leave your 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 little town outside of Indianapolis. No, and they're I, giving you an opportunity to see it virtually. I don't want to bang the same drum every single time I get on here, but I'm still waiting on Alwyn Cash's Medal of Honor, which will be the last like trip I take for the Legion. I logged. 
I told him a year and a half ago, like when Alan Cash gets his Medal of Honor, I'm going to it. And as always happens when I go to a Medal of Honor ceremony, I set aside one day to go to Arlington and to visit my friends that are there. And I will absolutely go and visit this. Uh, I'm not really a virtual guy unless we're talking about online role playing games. <laughs> uh, oh, other than well. that. Yeah. I, well now if my little hobbit could run there through the lord of the rings online oh, i would God. visit it but otherwise i'm not really a virtual guy <laughs> i can't i just i you're, physically you're, can't you're sorry you're a virtual you guy to... you're a virtual guy to me because i've only ever seen you on screen I, yeah, that's that. true that's mm. so you might not be real i'm gonna have to ask Con- holly convention brother convention we are gonna have a it's few like adult Matrix beverages stuff. I have I have at least met Ashley and Ashley has met you, so I guess we're one step away from meeting. And you've met and my I've boss. met Holly and you've met Holly. Yeah, and, and you met see? my boss, and I, met I know my boss. So there's three people. <laughs> we're one degree of separation away. So oh wait wait wow. hold on, I'm getting a I'm getting a ding 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 in my ear. Hold on. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a fun fact. Really, I'm supposed to tell the nerds. Which nerds? Oh, Mark and Ashley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in full nerd mode. Sure, sure, sure. I'll let them know. All right. I just got some breaking factoid news to tickle the nerdy brains of the Nerdingtons. And it is, according to a 2018 government report, women of color represented nearly 61% of enlisted women in the United States Armed Forces and about 38% of women officers I assume also in the United States Armed Forces. It was an incomplete factoid, but the nerds understood it. I can tell. I can see the amazement in their eyes. Wait, wait, wait wait a second. Did you just play the, wait, it's breaking news on a report from 2018? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this just in. Shuffle papers. Uh, Wait, hold on. Civil War broke out in 1861. Did Did you know? No, I didn't know. I broke the news to you, son. I broke the news to you. (laughs) What are you dropping knowledge on me? The more you know. Well, I am proud of you. That is fantastic. I think it is. Oh, oh, wait, this just in. I think we're going to go to an ad break next. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right, Mark. I can confirm. And we'll add. I can confirm that. Let's do it. 100 Miles for Hope is back, and we're taking it to the next level. This year, you could choose over 40 different activities and track your progress on a handy mobile app. We have sweet swag to commemorate your journey, including tech shirts, baseball caps, hoodies, pins, patches, and challenge coins. All proceeds from these purchases support veterans and military families through the Veterans and Children Foundation. Head to legion.org slash 100 miles to get started. All right, everybody, we're back after that tantalizing fun fact from the Jeff Daly. Breaking breaking news. Breaking news, excuse me. (laughs) Breaking news from Jeff Daly. (laughs) We're having way too much fun today. Okay, so we're going to move right into rapid fire because I can already see the the fire burning in Jeff's eyes to, to get started. So let's do this. All right. So first, (laughs) so the first one up, um, support for making women register in the draft, but none for mandatory service commission says officials from the national commission of public service offered a host of ideas to increase young Americans interest in serving in the military in a testimony before Congress a few weeks ago. And they're, reviewing all of this information and data and we'll see what they agree upon hopefully later on this fall 2021 fingers crossed knock on wood what did you all think of this let's uh uh, i'm gonna tiptoe here because there's a there there's a lot of there's a lot of landmines in this topic Mm. so we we've spent an entire show talking about uh women being capable uh being heroic doing big amazing things and if and if that is the case and we will assume that it is factual then not only should they be in the draft they should also be drafted for dangerous duty 
uh, along with men. I mean, it's we're talking about equality. And of, of course, uh, just like when men get drafted, if they can't handle the job, they get sent somewhere else. I mean, they're not going to make someone go to the infantry who can't be in the infantry, uh, regardless of internal plumbing. So I think that, yes, women should definitely uh, take advantage of the privilege of <laughs> signing up for the draft, hoping that they never have to... Uh, called upon and then also that they if capable they could be called upon to do dangerous duty including combat okay all right mark what do you think yeah no i i i think as we're moving you know we've set a goal to be a colorblind society and now i think we have to be a gender blind society and if you know if young men need to register for the draft to qualify for student loans and all these other things i think that women being viewed as equals starts with the bad stuff here too, which is registering for the draft. And, and on a sort of side benefit, I think it is good that I think, you know, we need to, we need to not engage in wars if we can help it. And if, if people are a little more hesitant to draft women, fine, then be more hesitant to go to war in the first place. I think it's, I think it's fair. I think it's the, I think it's the right answer. And, I, it's kind of what I expected, so I'm I'm reasonably happy with it. Yeah, there's... yeah, I think that's a great point. And uh, the the article does, you know, they found that you know no one was for mandatory military service. Like there are other countries that do that. Obviously, with the increased involvement with women in the military, which right now it's all volunteer force, right? Like so, we have to voluntarily raise our right hands. No one's, you know, Uncle Sam isn't saying, "Hey, we want you," right? Um, but yeah, I think to, to Jeff's point and your, your point, Mark, that, you know, as we move as a more inclusive society and we're considering what the 21st century wars look like, I think men and women should have an equal part in if that if, if that's something that has to happen. Right. Like you can't say I want one piece and then say like, oh, but I don't want to be a, you can't have you can't. No, sorry. Yeah. You just you're going to draft, you got to draft both because we're both serving. It just doesn't make any sense any other way. And you might disagree for our listeners out there and that's fine. That's okay. That's why we have these conversations. So, all right, let's, let's move on to rapid fire number two. So American Legion auxiliary girl state programs finds a way to continue their annual events for high schoolers among pandemic limitations. Um, so really cool story. Uh, you know, as, as many have encountered last year and continuing on this year, we've gone virtual. And despite all the challenges and, and changes, um, young girls are still learning valuable lessons in civic duty and government to the thanks of many dedicated volunteers um, in our uh, American Legion Auxiliary and, and vice versa in other places, right? Our Boy State, Girl State, etc. And uh, they're building a really cool format to benefit um, with with speakers and all this great stuff. So so what did you get? What was your takeaway from this? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start just... Yeah, I, it's good that the auxiliary is certainly looking at this, and I presume the Legion is too, but I, I'm still cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to go to Boy State. I've mm. always said I volunteer every year at Boy State. Boy State of Virginia, the best boy state in the country as far as I'm concerned. And my bucket gets low dealing with people complaining all year round and complaining about millennials and complain about this, complain about that, and the bickering mm -hmm. about politics and everything else. And then I go to Boy State and I just have hope because the kids are excellent and even the ones that aren't necessarily interested are respectful. They pay attention and they have a good time. And it really gives me hope for the future. So you know, like, should we be adapting to, as I just said, I'm not a particularly uh, online <laughs> guy unless I'm in the guise of a little avatar. But I I'm hoping that I get back to Boy State with the 800 boys that, you know, are, are troublemakers and causing problems. and But they're having fun and learning some stuff. I want to get back into that environment. I haven't left Indiana in damn near a year. I would really like to get out of the state of Indiana. Right. So, you got we got to open up and i'm hoping that all the uh, i'm hoping that all the vaccines is starting to work but jeffrey absolutely so i'm i'm going to take a different tact on this i think that um 
what this shows is that the entire American Legion and our programs are improvising, adapting, and overcoming to the situation that we find ourselves in today. We are embracing technology when people would never have assumed that the American Legion would embrace technology and change and, and being all modern and fancy do. That's a new word for you all. Fancy, fancy do. do. Yeah, Ooh. I'm sure Super Producer Holly's going to be using it on the regular. Anyway, so <laughs> the fancy do that we're doing here at the American Legion and it, and it extending to Girl State, I know that uh, it was also an oratorical. Uh, I've seen some, yeah. some stories about oratorical mm -hmm. doing it. I'm not sure how they do it with the rules of things not being recorded. Thus, I don't know. I don't understand how that part all works, but I'm... I'm I'm happy for the girls of Girls State. And I'm happy for the people who are participating in all these programs that it's not being taken away from them because of COVID. It's terrible when COVID, uh, like tertiary fatalities, such as losing out on this experience and the scholarship opportunities and the putting it on your uh, college applications right. and all of that. I'm glad all of that is being taken care of, even for our our friendly technophobe, Mark Seavey, even though he has to deal with that, um, I'm glad that we I'm glad that we have a solution for these girls. I, I am I am like half Amish and half Luddite. Like I hate technology, and I'm still in the leading vanguard of the American Legion in terms of technology. It's a little startling, but I will say that we have come a long way. I. I can point out about 100 members of our NEC who are not very technologically savvy before who now have regular meetings on Zoom and on Skype. So, yeah, it's so it's kind of sad that it took a pandemic and your tertiary casualty thing is couldn't have phrased it better if yeah. I had 100 years. You're exactly right. It's it's a shame that that one year, it's like the the year that time forgot these Poor yeah. people didn't have the opportunity to do that. I'm glad that we're not going to let future problems like this. But again, a year and a half ago, this probably would have been pretty unimaginable. This was stuff out right. of a Stephen King novel. It wasn't out of anything that was actually happening in real life. And now, hopefully, we're, we're almost in the clear. I know I get my shot, my second shot here in two weeks. Holly, uh, Super Producer Holly's about to go get hers. And I, I'm, I'm looking done. forward to it. You're done. Look at you. I got. I'm the, hey, I'm I'm the only one who hasn't gotten the shot yet at all. Like I'm, I'm Team still Pfizer. Waiting. DC is a weird area because we are not a state; we are just an area, right? We're, we're just a region, and uh, yeah, that, we're gonna that, get there. And just a quick shout out: the VA Wait, has been great. I, say what mm -hmm. you will about the VA; the VA has been phenomenal in terms of vaccination. I've seen Absolutely. it from all my friends who are are posting pictures of them getting the shots. I think it's great. That's the well, I know we're not talking. Do... I know we're not talking about vaccines, but I say the West LA or VA is all ages for veterans. If you're nice. in the VA system here, it's all ages. And also, Team Pfizer, Kalamazoo, Michigan. What home of who? Jeff Daly. That's what I'm saying. You too can have a little Kalamazoo insight. Never mind. That's all right. You're really right. inappropriate. <laughs> Woo! Okay. I was. I was Lord actually... have mercy. All right. It, so little, little known CV fact: Pfizer was my first employer. I was a copper smelter for Pfizer in 1986. Yeah, thank that one. Wow, smelter. I wasn't even born then. Okay. Yeah. I, was a, I was a <laughs> copper smelter before Ashley was a twinkle. So there you go. <laughs> Yet another CD factoid for you. Uh, every time like, I, when I hear people say, like, not even a twinkle in your eye, I always think of that Family Guy episode with Stewie. <laughs> not like an endorsement of Family Guy, but like that's where my brain goes. I just picture that. I like the anyway. one where he's... I like the one where he's fighting with his uh, with his unborn brother, who is uh, yes, that's Wallace exactly Shawn the episode. is the voice of him. Yeah. Anyway, Jeff is like, "What the heck?" Come on, All man! Right, you so don't that like was, Family Guy? That was a good rapid fire. It wasn't super episodes. rapid. All right. All right. So <laughs> rapid fire number three. All right. So President Biden has nominated two women generals for four-star command. So there are more than 230,000 active duty women in the U.S. Armed Forces. And every day, many of them are breaking barriers and becoming the first of firsts. And some of these women that have been nominated have been kicking butt for a long time and have very loud and proud careers. So shout outs to Air Force General Jacqueline Van o Ovost, Ovost, I believe I said that correctly. Apologies, ma'am. Uh, Army Lieutenant General 
Laura Richardson, who were recently nominated to lead four-star general combat, uh, commanded commands. Combanded, com, combanded commands. Wow, how about, that's, how about that's combatant? Combatant. Combatant. <laughs> wow, I didn't even say it right the first time. You're I'm sorry, all my listeners. Right. We're, we're still not saying it right. <laughs> that's why I got you, buddy. <laughs> But listen, super impressive women. They've got really great backgrounds. I'm so happy. You know, if, if confirmed, they'll be like the second and third women to like hold these positions. A great nomination. I think, you know, very well deserved. Like these are qualified women, right? Like we're not just, like, we're not just throwing names out there. Like these are qualified women who are, are rocking it and they're doing amazing things. What are your guys' thoughts? It's a bunch of bull. <laughs> <gasps> Jeff. No, seriously. Neither one of these are a Marine, so waste of my time. Oh. Uh, oh, I think okay. this is... <laughs> these women are so excited now, they don't have to salute um, Anne Dunwoody, if you want to go back to my yeah. quiz yeah, that yeah, I did earlier. Yes, they are now equals with Anne Dunwoody. So it's... Uh, it, it, we're talking about, again, we're talking about equality, and we're talking about... And I mean full equality, not like equality like... I'm talking about like real equity situations we now have mm-hmm. these women in leadership in combatant uh, leadership positions mm-hmm. and that filters down because uh, if, if you can have a four-star general you can have a colonel you can have a colonel you can have a sergeant major um, or whatever the air force calls them i don't know what they call their sergeant majors but um you can have all of these things because you know what a four-star woman <laughs> looks like to go right. uh, uh, to foreshadow uh, some conversation we're going to have in a week. So it's super exciting that uh, we have these we have these role models for people to aspire to, and it's not just the fact that they got their fourth star. I mean, rank rank means something, but it's the story of the person who got the fourth star that's really the inspiring part of it to me. I love it. I love everything about that. The real dri- awesome. the real driver on this, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that reaching a general has always been sort of a checklist thing. You have to have done this. 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 Mm-hmm. And then they weigh them all against each other. And the fact that there were so many MOSs close to women blocked them off some of those check marks. Now mm-hmm. that we're starting to see them filter through the ranks, they can meet their male equivalent that they've had a command you know but a, a regimental or battalion command in a combat situation you know there, right there can be females that are in charge of a female you know of a like an mp unit or whatever else in combat mm-hmm. so this is just a it's the natural extension of it and yeah is it past time of course you know it's, it's good to see it absolutely well thank you for a, a quasi rapid fire it was like yeah. an intermediate fire of rapid attack now you're not now you feel my pain, don't you? Now Ms. I feel S. your pain. That's that's okay though. We have great conversations, and I know our listeners love to hear us ramble. Do, do blah, they? Blah blah. Do, mean... they? <laughs> do they? Do they? I don't I know. They write, write us. Fire send to us be... love notes. Tell us. Do you love? Do you hate? Eh. Um. <laughs> all right. So shout Hello. outs. What do you got, Jeff? Ooh. Now I'm gonna. Yeah. This one's gonna be a little more than I normally do because what oh. I'm going to do today is not a specific person because I don't believe people just need role models. I believe organizations need role models. And I'm super fortunate and uh, I'm super fortunate that my Legion experience is at post 43 because I can tell you the lady vets who are in charge, Jennifer Campbell's our uh, commander, our first, or she's the second one, second woman commander in 102 years. Our adjutant, Diana Wilson, is the first female adjutant in 102 years. Karen Kraft is on our EC. She's a powerhouse in entertainment. She's a powerhouse in our virtual boardroom of the post. Simone Lahr is Assistant Sergeant Arms. She started the Legion Service Corps, and she's still serving in the Netty Guard. She's probably working today. Donna Calloway is our chaplain at both the post and the district. Jennifer Bofer is our historian and blood drive coordinator. Krishna Flores is our service officer. She's also the senior vice of her VFW post. Post, and she works for the VA Vet Center. What? She's just serving veterans 24 hours a day. She's probably dreaming of new ways to, when she's sleeping of serving veterans. So what that says to me is their individuals need role models, but organizations need role models. If you don't have women serving in your posts, in leadership, and in, in other in other ways, you might want to look at that. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna go out and say this every 
woman that I listed here is not in their position because they're a woman, because I, I don't, I don't like that. I don't think it benefits women to do that. These women are in their position because they belong in their position. And it's, and it's, uh, it's not necessarily, I know it's not necessarily everywhere, but I'm telling you, if you're in your posts and you want people to feel welcome, and you give them opportunities. Now, you give people an opportunity to succeed, and uh, and I'm so glad to be in a post that does that, and I want to visit other posts that do that, so make me proud. That was American beautiful. Region. I love it. You have I've seen the photo of all of your, your Hollywood Post 43 ladies, and they're a bunch of powerhouses. Um, maybe we can include that in the show notes. That, that photo of all of those women on that stage... Do you know what I'm talking about, Jeff? I'm telling you, I've seen a really great photo. It was with Jennifer, and it's got like all the different ladies with the different ages. I feel like maybe you've shared it, but I think it's noteworthy, and I think it's important for representation. So I loved it. So kudos. What about you, Mark? Uh, and I'm going to do... Wait, are we commenting on shout-outs? We don't normally. Oh. Oh, no. I, but we sorry. can. I was just saying, I think that's great. <laughs> oh, just... okay. I'm acknowledging that you just listed a bunch of badass ladies who are in positions because they deserve those positions. So kudos to you, my friend. Maybe you will get a love note. Maybe soon. It's going to happen. All right. My, my quick shout out. Um, it's an issue we've talked about before uh, several times. Resolution 110 of the American Legion, support for Congressional Gold Medal for the Signal Corps female telephone operators of World War One. Again, we've talked about this before. It's obscene to me that this was not passed during the last election cycle. Uh, they're just trying to give them the Congressional Gold Medal. It, 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 there's not a cost really associated with this. It's, it's just honoring the, these female telephone operators of World War I. They're, it's so non-confrontational, but because we live in the society we live in, didn't get passed last year. Shout out to Senator John Tester, uh, Democrat from Montana. Shout out to Senator Jerry Moran, Republican from Kansas. Shout out to Mary Senator uh, Margaret Hassan, Democrat from New Hampshire. And shout out Senator Marsha Blackburn, Republican from Tennessee. It's not a Republican-Democrat issue. It's not a male-female issue. It's something that needs to get done. They have introduced S-692. Uh, I would encourage everyone to contact your member of Congress. If their name is not on this list, call them and tell them they damn well better be on this list or you're going to call them every day until it gets done. Mm. I love it. I love it. So we are wrapping up an amazing episode and I will conclude with this. So last year alone, women graduated from Army Special Forces training, uh, became a, you know, we had a woman become a, a Green Beret for the first time in history. We've got an Air Force pilot that became the first woman to fly an F-35 in combat. The Navy selected its first women to take command of a nuclear powered aircraft carrier and the Navy's first black female fighter pilot earned her wings. I just want to say happy Women's History Month to all of our lady vets out there and continue to be loud and proud about your stories. Um, and I just want to say salute to all the ladies and all of the supporters, all of our legionnaires out there who are helping share these stories and really allow women to feel welcomed at our post. So I appreciate you all. And uh, my last, I guess, words would be, you know, make sure you're wearing your shoes because there's glass everywhere, ladies and gents. So this is the Tango Alpha Lima podcast signing off and reminding you to subscribe to Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. And while you're there, don't forget to rate us, preferably five stars, and leave us a review. Um, you can also uh, recommend a guest, a uh, to for or excuse me for us to interview so we also look forward to hearing your feedback and any love notes can be sent to tango Al, excuse me tango alpha lima at legion.org so we just want to say thank you to everyone and we'll be back next week happy spotify. women's history month spotify